for the past five years, the S&P 500 did 91%. That means if you put in $100,000 in 2017, right now you have $200,000. It's a cheat code. The S&P 500 is always going up long term. And despite this cheat code in the system, 90% of all retail investors lost money in the last five years. This is literally one of the worst pyramid schemes you can ever imagine. You have 10% making almost 100% of the money. 10% of the people, 100% of the money. While 90% of the people are losing money. And the reason they're losing money is so ridiculous and so easily avoidable, it just blows my mind. So in today's video, I'm going to explain the worst, absolutely worst investing mistake that is butchering your stock portfolio. Now look, I'm making this video because I want to help you. I don't want to see people lose their hard earned money. I don't got a course to sell. I don't have any paywall where I hide the real information. I'm not the freaking Oracle. I don't have the formula to guarantee success in the stock market. Nobody does. In fact, if they guarantee it, they're probably scammers. Now, I do know how to avoid idiotic mistakes to improve your chances of not losing money in the stock market. And that I'm going to share in this video for free. So you guys have that in your brain before you do some stupid shit. Now look. As always, before we start, don't click nothing, don't smash nothing, don't buy nothing. Now, a few years ago, a friend of mine bought a stock of a company, which I will reveal at the end of this video. See if you can figure out which stock I'm talking about. So he bought a stock, I want to say in 2019, roughly around January 2019, for $70. Now, he rode up all the way to $180 for about a year. At $180, there was a guy who bought the stock from him right? My friend was happy. He almost tripled his money in a year. Happy days. Now, the guy that bought the stock from him for around $880, sorry, $180, he basically sat on it for another month. And a month later, the stock went down all the way to $109. So within a month, the guy who purchased the stock from him lost a lot of money. In fact, he lost Almost $70 on this stock. Wait, $71 on the stock. So basically, he got screwed. And he felt so awful about it. Oh my goodness, this stock is crashing. He literally could not take the emotional pain that comes with having a virtual loss. And he sold it. He sold it because he was scared out of his goddamn mind that this stock is going to crash to zero. My friend actually bought the stock from him. He bought it straight up. Let's go, $109. He bought it, sat on it all the way until November 2021, when the stock hit $1,200. That means he 10 x his money within just a year and a half. Now, that other guy who just sold it to him fumbled back into the stock. He was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this idiot neighbor of mine just, you know, 10 x his money over this shit. I want a piece of that. So he fumbled back into the stock. My friend happily sold it to him at $1,200. This stock is now at $800. So this guy is shit. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this stupid mistake again. My friend buys it back from him for $800. Another month go by, the stock is at $1,025 today. So the moral of the story is that, of course, I'm using hypothetical people here. But on the one hand of this trade, you always have the institutionals. On the other hand, the retail investors. And you can pretty much guess which is which in this example. I mean, it's not hard to understand who's the retail investor and who's the institutional. The institutional always wins because they always buy cheap, sell expensive. And the retail investors make the same mistakes again and again and again, costing them a lot of money. This is how a stock goes from $70 to $1,025 within just a couple of years, and yet most retail investors lost money. Now look, how to avoid it? It's quite simple. It's mind-shockingly simple to avoid these stupid mistakes. Look, all you got to do is you got to follow a few simple rules. First of all, not doing any research on the stock is going to cost you a lot of money. You have to know what the company does, what kind of business model, what's the total addressable market, 
What's the business environment is like? What's the management like? You have to know everything about this company as if you're buying the actual business in its entirety. Just buying stock based on name without doing any research, that's an assurance of failure. Number two, not diversifying. But Tom, you have 40% of your portfolio in one stock in Palantir and a dangerous one. True, but I also have 40% of my entire portfolio in the S&P 500, which is the most diversified investment you can make. So 40% of my portfolio is literally diversified across the US economy. And I play with another 40% on Palantir and the other 20% is on Google and Tesla. So at least, at least have the understanding that you cannot be arrogant by saying, hey, I can pick five or six stocks, individual stocks, and I'll do better than the US economy, than the S&P 500. That's just pure arrogance. You got to put some money on diversified investments like the S&P 500. Number three, getting rich quick mindset. Now, if you're in the stock market to get rich quick, it's a bad idea. It's not going to work. That's not what it's for. The stock market can give you two things. In the bull market, it can actually increase your capital, make you a little bit more financially sustainable. In bad times, it can serve as a defense mechanism to prevent your money from getting eroded from inflation. In neither of these cases, you're not getting rich overnight. People seem to think that everybody will follow the same path that Dave Lee had. When Dave Lee went all in in Tesla, it exploded out of the stratosphere, he made a whole bunch of money. That happens. But for the most part, it does not happen to most people. It's like saying, hey, I'm going to go up there, you know, pick up a basketball, go to the NBA next day. Easy, easy peasy. It's not work like that. It is what it is. Now, look, number four is ignoring tax. One of the horrible mistakes that people do, they forget there's tax to pay. Uncle Sam or whatever uncle you have, whatever country you're at, wants a piece of your action. Now, in the United States, at least, you can easily avoid that by maximizing your tax advantage accounts, the 401ks, the IRAs, where you literally don't pay any tax on capital gains. Now, once you've done that, there's also other planning methods to optimize your taxation. I'm not going to get into that here, but at least have the understanding of what is short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains. People buy and sell quickly. They don't realize short-term capital gains are not to be fucked with. Now, also, wash sale rule. A lot of people forget about the wash sale rule, which also can be easily avoided if you're trading actively by setting up an LLC or an S-Corp. There's a lot of things you can do around optimizing your tax. It's going to really improve your performance. And a lot of people just let it go. Now, look, the next thing is not looking at fundamentals. Oh my goodness. Blindly going balls deep in investments, you know, God squadly do about. You know, it's like Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold him. You got to know when to fold him. You got to know the fundamentals of the company. What's the price to sales ratio? What's the debt to equity ratio? What the balance sheet looks like? What the cash flow looks like? You have to understand these things. What's the margins? What's the gross margins? What's the EBITDA? What's the operating margin? You have to know these things. Now, look, the next thing is, Harder than it sounds. Not controlling your emotions. Not controlling your emotions is being basically in a casino mentality, being unstable. Basically, you know, when you go into a casino and you lose some money, you're like, I'm going to win it back. Or if you want some money, you're like, ah, I'm going to play it. It's not my money. It's just house money. Both of these are just mirror images of the same fuckery, which is not realizing fake money and real money are completely different things. You can't get frustrated. You cannot get frustrated. You cannot get emotional. You have to be level-headed and calculated. Now, the next thing is hype. Following trends, following this herd mentality into the stocks that you have no business in mind. Because by the time you're buying those, they're already parabolically up. You're setting yourself up to be the sucker. You cannot follow the herd into hype stocks. That's a really bad idea. Some people will make money. You'll hear about them a lot. Most of you will lose money and you'll be quiet about it. That's why you never hear about the bad cases. Unless, of course, you're on Wall Street bets where you do about it quite a lot. Now, look, the next thing is not taking responsibility. <laughs> the market is manipulated. The floor is crooked. The Internet is not fast enough. A whole bunch of slew of reasons that don't take accountability for what you're doing. If you screwed up, if you fucked up, it's on you. And you got to admit it so you can learn and get better for the next time not to do this stupid shit. If you keep blaming others, you're never going to get better. Now, the next thing is being 
impatient, being undisciplined, being unable to sit on cash. Sometimes shit are just too scary and you got to sit on cash despite inflation, despite the urge, the itchy fingers to get back in. Sitting on cash is sometimes discipline. It's okay as long as you just don't do it for two years and lose a whole bunch of money to inflation. Now, look, the last thing is not having a clear set of rules and a clear system of how to screen and evaluate companies. If you don't have that, how are you making investment decisions? Based on what? Based on what some YouTuber is saying? I mean, come on. You got to work out a system that is objective, which you can follow to know exactly what's the price of the stock. Once it hits it, you're out. Before it hits it, you stay in. Simple as that. Now, let me know below if you want more videos covering the fundamentals and how you actually work out these things. I'm going to try and respond to as much as I can. See you in the next video.